break this vector into components. Remember that the task here was to break this vector into components. Well, in order to do that, we have to draw the components. Remember, we have to draw a right triangle using um, legs that are parallel to these axes. Um, well, we can treat this dashed line as parallel to the y-axis, so this will be one of the legs. And then the x-axis here will be the horizontal. This x component will be horizontal, and those will be parallel. And we could call this w sub y and w sub x. Very important to put arrows on the components. Well, the overall vector was pointing up and to the right. So the components are pointing to the right and up. Here's the angle we're focusing on. Here's the side we were given. We're trying to figure out what these components are. We can't use the Pythagorean theorem here. You can only use the Pythagorean theorem when you're given two sides and you need a third side. The Pythagorean theorem is for when you have or already know two sides and you want to find the third side. But here we only know one side, so we're going to have to use trig functions. Uh, which trig functions will we use? Well, the one thing we know is the hypotenuse. We don't know the adjacent and opposite sides. So let's figure out the adjacent side using the hypotenuse. Should we use cosine or sine? Well, cut. The adjacent side comes from the cosine. So here's our very standard formula. Remember that if you ever are in any doubt about whether this formula is correct, you can go back to the original formula. Cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And if you cross multiply this formula, you'll get this one. Our adjacent side here is w sub y. But we're going to just plug in a magnitude for that because we just want the length of the adjacent side. The hypotenuse was 8, and the angle we were given was 40 degrees. So we need to use our calculator to find W sub Y. Well, 8 times the cosine of 40 is 6.1. Now we still have to find um, the sine component. Well, let's see. Our y component is pointing up, and up is the positive direction. So the y component is positive 6.1. On to the adjacent component, I'm sorry, onto the opposite component, hypotenuse times sine of theta. The sine indicates the, hypo uh, indicates the opposite side. So. Uh, the opposite side would involve the magnitude of w sub x, not the sine component. So again, we use a dot because we're just dealing with trig functions here. The hypotenuse is 8, and the angle here was 40. I'm just using theta here as a generic term for our angle. Still dealing with the magnitude, we have to use our calculator to find 8 times the sine of 40. That's 5.1. Now I'm going to write w sub x without the dot to show that I'm finding the sine component. Well, w sub x was pointing to the right, but that's the negative direction. So w of sub x should be negative. Remember that if you didn't get the sines right, you didn't get the problem right. It's not good enough to get the magnitudes. You've got to get the sines as well. Indicate the positive sign as well as the negative sign. Remember that the goal of this series of videos was to teach you two skills. One skill is how to start with an overall vector and break it down into its components. And the other skill was how to take the components and build up the overall vector. 
In the earlier portion of the videos, uh, and in the earlier portion of, of this video series, we saw how to take the overall vector and break it down into components. So going from left to right was the first thing we learned. Uh, and then recently, we've been learning how to take the components and build them into the overall vector. So recently, we've been learning how to go from right to left. Well, you might have noticed that in this problem, I switched things up a bit. I went back to the earlier skill, even though recently we've been going over how to go from the components to the overall vector, here I switched back and I gave you the overall vector again and asked you to find the components. And the reason for that is, of course, in, um, in your actual problems and tests, um, you're going to have to be constantly going back and forth between these two types of problems and not letting them uh, not getting confused about the two different types of problems. You have to be able to go from the overall vector to the components and from the components to the overall vector. Um, so you need to keep practicing going back and forth between these uh, two different methods without getting confused about them. So I hope that nobody had much trouble with this problem. Uh, but if this problem did give you trouble, it might be because you've all, uh, you started forgetting. If this problem did give you trouble, it might be because you've started forgetting some of the material that we went over earlier in the videos. And if so, you better go back and redo some of that material. Remember that this is material you have to have complete mastery of to proceed uh, in physics. Um, uh, unless you're very comfortable with this, with this material, the rest of physics is going to be quite difficult for you. So hold yourself to a high standard here. Make sure that you're comfortable with both of these types of problems. If necessary, go back and redo the earlier questions in the videos. If necessary, go to your textbook and do more problems with, from your textbook. Uh, make sure you can get these problems right quickly and efficiently and without careless mistakes.